Hi everyone, Dr. A. Thought I'd create a small video as an answer to a couple of questions in the activity for chapter one. So a couple of students wanted some more clarification on the governmental agencies that were mentioned in chapter one. So we're going to go over that uh, in a little bit more detail there for you guys. Okay, so um, there were a few federal agencies mentioned. Um, and these federal agencies do enforce rules and regulations that are put into law. So like when you, um, for example, we pass the Affordable Care Act or uh, pass HIPAA or something like that, then uh, depending on the different rules and all that, they're basically, their job is to look through all of it and then change the way they do business, monitor stuff so that they have input in rules um, and regulations in place within their uh, agency. So uh, we are going to look at a few big ones. So we're going to look at the FDA um, and the Centers for Medicaid and Medicare Services, also often re referred to as CMS, um, the Agency for Healthcare Research and Quality, the Centers for Mental Health Services, uh, also referred to as SAM SAMHSA, and then the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the CDC, which has, of course has been in the news quite a bit since the pandemic started. Okay, so the FDA, uh, its biggest job, if you will, is if anything is going to hit the U.S. market that could, um, you know, affect your health uh, or safety and all of that, then, uh, and I'm talking about, you know, safety of you know, consumption or putting it on you and, and stuff like that, it has to be cleared by the FDA. So uh, it is responsible for ensuring that these products are safe. So food, uh, human and veterinary products. So this would be um, drugs, uh, prescription drugs that are human for humans and pets. But also uh, on some of that, uh, the veterinary products, they also approve like you know dog foods, cat foods, pet foods, all of that kind of stuff. The FDA has to approve. Um, biologic products. So these are products that are um, you know come from biological processes so, such as blood, plasma, and all that. So um, like uh, transfusions and all of that and in the hospitals um, are regulated by the FDA and blood collections, blood donations, and <clears throat> all of that stuff. Okay. And they, they could put in rules like um, some of the stuff they've done over the years is uh, like after HIV became a thing, then you have to test all the blood that was donated um, for HIV, then it was, uh, they had a hepatitis B and hepatitis C, and there's more and more things that they've tested, but uh, those are some of the ways that they can help ensure that safe products are um, being uh, given on the market or delivered on the market in the U.S. Uh, any, any medical device, so this is anything that would be on or in your body. Uh, it has to go through the FDA to make sure that it's safe. So, you know, things like pacemakers and any kind of implants, but also things um, like, uh, for example, a, a glucose test strip, or a little, the new glucose monitors that you can wear and all that kind of stuff. So, um, those are all medical devices. Um, cosmetics. So, uh, and anything, um, you know, personal care products and stuff like that. So, anything that you would apply to your body. Uh, so lotions and shampoos and all of that kind of stuff, but, you know, uh, so makeup, all, all of that. And then uh, electronic products, so um, things like, um, you know, chart, chart, electronic chart records, but also uh, different softwares and, you know, uh, things. So, you, you know, just to make sure that your safety is not compromised uh, while you use these products. Um, it is also responsible for ensuring that the, your consumer product information is accurate. So they have a lot of labeling regulations. So they're the ones that are behind what can can and can't be said on a label. So you can't make false claims, but they they're even have regulations on what kind of claims you can make about a product. Um, and so, um, like you can you have to have like studies to back it up and it has to be absolutely, you know, a hundred percent sure that you can say, Oh, this can prevent that. This, you know, this supplement, this product, et cetera, can prevent this type of disease and stuff. So uh, because it's hard to do and it's really, the rules are really strict and you will see um, on vitamins and supplement now more things like supports the immune system, supports the cardiovascular system. So you can make, 
um, body system claims, but it's really hard to make disease claims. Okay, so all of that is because of the FDA rules and stuff like that. Uh, it advances public health then also by speeding up innovations to make medicine and food more effective, safer, and more affordable. That's kind of their general goal. And so, um, like we saw with the um, COVID vaccine, so the FDA did approve it, but um, they made sure that it was safe, but they also sped up the product um, because... Um, Normally, it can take up to 10 years for a new drug, drug or, um, to, to, to go through the whole entire process from start to finish to get released to the market. And obviously, um, that was shortened to because it needed to get on the market, but they didn't cut corners to make it less safe or anything like that. Um, they, they went through the process. They just went through the, the hurdles faster. Um, and so, um, but there's still, there still a process to follow to get something on the market. Um, anyway, so uh, one thing uh, that I want to clear up that's often a misconception with the FDA is there are not the ones that are actually doing all the studies. So um, each manufacturer has to do its own safety studies, its own clinical trials and all that kind of stuff. It has to fund all of that. And then they have to submit all of those to the FDA and then the FDA reviews them. Um, so there can be some issues with that, obviously, uh, but it's just, there's so many products on the market. It's, it's an, it would be an impossible task for the FDA to conduct the, the safety uh, trials and the clinical trials and all that kind of stuff on every product that hits the market. So that is something to keep in mind. Okay, so CMS, Centers for Medicaid and Medicare Services, um, they were established when the Medicare and Medicaid programs were signed into law, so new law, and we've got this new agency to help manage how do you implement this new law. Uh, uh, so it has, CMS has over 20 different offices that can oversee all different aspects of their program. Their two main programs are Medicaid for the poor and Medicare for the elderly. And they also have the the children's inf in infant uh, program, which is CHIP, which is like a it's like a Medicaid, but where the income limits aren't so low, uh, and it's for children only. And so they also fall under CMS. Um, they're basically their primary responsibility is to provide policy, so um, you know help guide policy and uh, rules and all that kind of stuff on things to follow. Um, funding, that's the big one. They pay for a lot of stuff. And then also oversight to healthcare programs that serve the elderly and, and the poor. So basically, if uh, you accept patients that have Medicaid and Medicare, then you fall automatically under all the rules uh, that CMS has enacted if you want to file for reimbursement on claims, Medicaid and Medicare uh, claims. And um, they pay, but they get to set the price. So... Um, there's often, you know, negotiations and stuff like that with, um, you know, different, uh, not specifically like different offices, but they, you know, when they get ready to, to, to set a price on something, then they do seek advice and input from the people that it will affect the physicians and uh, all of that. And so um, they tend to pay less uh, for stuff than what the insurance would pay for, but they do, they do pay for it. Although it's important to know, like, a lot of times if they set like a price on how much they would pay for a certain prescription or whether or not they would pay for that prescription and all that, um, the um, insurance market tends to kind of follow along with what CMS does. So they they can set the tone of reimbursement for the entire nation really easily um, when they change their rules or put out their schedules of what they do pay and don't pay for or and how much they pay for. Then we have the Agency for Healthcare Research and Quality. So uh, it's uh, the lead federal agency that's charged with improving the safety and quality of the healthcare system. So um, it's in charge of developing knowledge, tools, and data that is needed to improve the healthcare system and help Americans, but also healthcare professionals, policymakers, and all of that make informed health decisions. Um, and so it's, you know, it's really easy to say, oh, the American healthcare system needs to be fixed. We're, we're having problems and, and all of that. But it's like, but, but what exactly, like precisely, what is it that we can do? Um, where, what, is, what does the data say? Um, 
and where are the problems and and then if you enact a policy to you know they come up with a policy and then it's you know it's proved the ahr you know puts it in place and all of that um is it actually fixing the problem you know they track all of that kind of stuff so so they invest heavily in research because you need research to find out what the problem is and then also how to fix the problem and so <coughs> sorry about that um, so they look at health delivery system uh, and it's beyond like what we're doing but it's it's understanding how to make it safer um, and so they, they they can look do studies and look at you know, uh, you know how we manage diabetic patients um, and so you know what's all involved in the managing a diabetic patient how is it best done you know should you know how often should he go see the doctor? How often should he do checkups? How often should um, their kidney function be checked? On just different things like that. But now, if you think about that for like every aspect of the U.S. healthcare system, you can see their task is quite quite large. And so uh, they also are responsible to create materials to teach and train healthcare systems and professionals. Uh, once they have, so they have the, the results. They've done research. They have the results. They have a direction to go into. Then now we have to train all the healthcare workers in all these facilities all over the U.S. said, okay, hey, research shows that this is what we should be doing. Can you know? Can you line up with this? And so here's why, here's training, here's this, here's that. Uh, and this is for every, you know, for every aspect of the healthcare system all over the nation. So it's, it's a big job. Um, and they also generate measures and data that can be used by providers and policymakers then to inform uh, their you know, practices for providers and to inform um, policies and laws and rules and stuff that are put in place at the you know, uh, federal level. Uh, then you have the Center for Mental Health Services. Uh, this is often referred to as Sam SHAMSHA. Uh, this also goes along with it. We'll talk about it again in um, Chapter 3. But um, uh, it leads federal efforts to promote the prevention and treatment of mental disorders. Um, Congress has created uh, the Centers for Mental Health Services to bring new hope to adults who have serious mental Ill illness and uh, children with emotional disorders. Um, so some of the things that de their goals are is to strengthen the nation's mental health system, uh, helping states improve and increase the quality and range of their treatment, rehab, and support. Um, way back, like when I first started in, a, you know, working with an actual job with benefits and stuff, like uh, mental health wasn't really covered. Uh, the only way you could get mental health was to go through an employee assistance program through your workplace, which, you know, sometimes if you're having mental health issues, you may or may not want to go through your workplace. Um, and so uh, if you wanted to go privately, then you just had to pay for it out of pocket entirely. And so... Um, they have uh, uh, removed some of these barriers. Uh, mental health has been uh, increasingly, because of the, their efforts, has been increasingly covered and more and more covered, uh, more and more so paid for by uh, health insurance plans and stuff. So uh, they, um, one of their goals is to make it easier for people to access mental health programs. They encourage a range of programs such as systems of care that can respond to the increasing number of mental, emotional, and behavioral problems among America's children. So, you know, just think of the explosion, how many more cases of autism and um, ADD, ADHD that there's been in children. Like, when I was growing up, there, there just weren't any. It's, it's kind of crazy. Um, it supports the outreach and case management programs for the thousands of Americans who are homeless. Uh, and the improvement of these services. Of course, homelessness is also a mental health issue. Uh, it ensures also that scientifically established findings and practice-based knowledge can be applied to prevent and treat mental disorders. So getting research into practice, right? And then the CDC, Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, again, been in the news for the last year because their mission is to protect health and promote quality of life through the prevention and control of disease, injury, and disability. Now, um, Initially, when it was founded, CDC, um, first it was like their, their, their biggest goal was, um, you know, infectious diseases, things that are sp spread, com communicable diseases is what we call things you can catch, like coronavirus and stuff, but it was you know, other things. Um, 
and uh, but it, it quickly expanded to non-communicable diseases. So they will have information also on prevention for like diabetes and heart disease and cancer and stuff like that. Um, their main goal is public health. So um, whenever they 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 do anything, that, whether it's the information they put out or recommendations and all of that, it's always going to be in the best interest of everybody, of the majority. We're looking at how can we move the, the needle of something on a large scale. So they're not, um, they're really not involved in the one-to-one -one physician patient relationship. Okay. Uh, so they work 24 seven to provide, to protect, sorry, the safety, health and security of America from threats here and around the world. As we can see, um, things that happen around the world can quick, very quickly affect the United States. Um, and um, I mean, they are even, because it's a public health agency, um, they are also concerned with threats <coughs> that are terroristic. But um, it's the CDC is a nation's leading science-based data-driven service organization that protects the public's health, and that's the idea, so protecting public health. That's the very the biggest key for the CDC. So um, they are 70 years old, um, and um, they've, they do science and put it into action to help children stay healthy so they can grow and learn, to help families, businesses, and communities fight diseases, you know, outbreaks, pandemics, etc., and stay strong and to protect the public's health. So there you go. That's CDC for you. And that was the last one. Thank you so much.